Alright, I don't really know where I'm going to go with this. I feel like we're cut creasing today. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Prue or Prue LaRue and today we're getting ready to go to a drag show. Oh, the sickening. In Brisbane. This is like my getting ready gear. I've just stripped all this makeup off and I've layered the Dr. Jart moisturizer on. Just like that soak. I just waxed my upper lip. Just on my brows. So if they're a bit red, that's why. But we're gonna go straight into eyes because I feel like I'm gonna make a mess. And then I'm going to do my face stuff. We're gonna go a bit crazy. So today is more like oh there's some whiskey. Today is more having fun. Cause I'm so excited! Uh, add some whiskey to this. I'm just cracking open some dimple. We're starting up a fresh bottle. This is actually one of my favorites. Oh, I don't want to sit down because as soon as I sit down, I have to get back up again. And I desperately need a new chair. Actually, I'm gonna, let's tell you the story of the new chair today. Or the chair. Mm. Oh, I love dimple. Dimple is just like a really nice, smooth whiskey. And um, the real bogan way of adding it to your Coke is just to let it <laughs> sip over the edge. And especially today, I've got a straw. How exciting. Um, well usually I will sip from it and then you get a big gulp of whiskey, which is fine. But I just prefer whiskey flavoured Coke. Alright, today I've decided to do something really special. Does anyone remember those Kimberly Clark days when she would do, like, she just came and slayed. So I'm putting the Too Faced Shadow Insurance all over. This is just because I have super oily eyelids. And then we're going to go MAC Painly Pot over the top. So I'm just showing you because I'm actually going like all out today. We're going hard. I used to love her what happened to my face videos. I can't wait for her to stop touring so she'll come back. But I wonder if she's enjoyed the break. But she started the whole anti haul trend. Um, I actually haven't gone back and re-watched any of it because I'm not sure. But she was all over it. So this is one of my makeup for you brushes from AliExpress. And I'm just going to layer this over the top of that one. Um, she really started like the whole trend. And I'm sorry, this is just gonna be super chatty. I'll try and stay on topic, but I do forget sometimes when I get caught up blending. She really started the whole trend of anti holes and like consumerism and like she just, you know, I love the way that she thought, or that she thinks about everything. Um, it was really cool at the time, but her trend has like become, I don't know, I feel like we're always looking for the next woke person. I'm getting disappointed. But I always felt like she wasn't like trying to attack the brands. It was more like, really, are they trying to sell us this? Um, I don't know. I'm not paying this for this. And I used to just love watching her. I think for me these days, like the beauty news girls are comparable. Because they still have that real love of makeup and they still buy a lot, but they still... Do you try and think with their wallets a bit more? What I'm gonna start trying to do is like be more mindful of my money. I look so red, sorry. I'm just seeing myself in the viewfinder. I'm like, ooh. I mean, I could dull it down, but like, ugh, it doesn't really matter. So, just buying space. Mm. All right, so, literally I'm gonna play with the Huda Beauty. I was thinking, cause I haven't actually pulled these out. Oh, no, I need to play with some of these. So my singles. These are like my indie singles, by the way. One day they'll have more friends, but for now this is them. Uh, Enchanted Lustre Cosmetics and the others are all Sydney Grace Co. I think I'll definitely put one of them on my inner corner. And then I'll do like a, then I can actually pull off a full look. So I'm just wondering, I've got like every color to play with. So I've got all these blues and I've got all of these. I feel like doing a really intense blue look. I think that's just the way I'm going to go. I'm sorry, Angel. I'll play with you another day. So this is a proper first impressions, but I'm pretty hopeful in this palette. And we've had quite a few of hers. This shade. I'll bring you a little bit closer. So this chair started creaking, I noticed the other day. And the reason I have such a shit chair, and this is like an embarrassing story, 
chairs because when I went to buy a chair, so I bought this desk from Super A Mart, which is like a you know, I don't know, like they just sell cheap furniture. I, I saw it online because they had the corner desk that I really wanted that would fit well in this room. And I went to buy a chair and I found a chair I liked, I sat on it, it was fine. And then the girl was like, oh, this chair is only rated for 80 kilos or more. And you know, like maybe you shouldn't buy it. I was so embarrassed, like so, so embarrassed. Number one, I've never looked at the rating of weight on chairs. I didn't realize it was actually a fucking thing. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I was so confused. Um, and I just felt like super embarrassed. Anyway, so I got my desk. I picked that up. I brought it home, fixed it all up and stuff. And then I was like, well, fuck, I need a chair still. I think this chair's weighted for like 50 kilos. <laughs> so, I bought it for Ikea for like 10 bucks. And you know what? It hasn't broken yet. So I would like to get a less creaky chair. Uh, that is part of my dream. I mean, I get she was trying to be helpful, but the chair I was looking at is way better than the chair I'm sitting on. Uh, so I wish she'd just shut up, really. Which made me so... Oh, it's the same to say. But it's true. I just wish... Um, because, like, I get what she's saying, but I, it just wasn't necessary. And I feel like a lot of times people share opinions that aren't always necessary. Like, we... You know, because then it was like, well, is there a chair that's like for fat people? Yeah, I remember this. We went through. And then I was like, um, okay, well, is there a chair that would fit me? Um, there wasn't. So then I left without a chair, which is all I really needed that day. So I'm just realizing we've got four mats and the rest are shimmers. Huh. Intriguing. So here's like the yellow shade the yellow shade which is a bit you know I mean it's not like amazing this is the top one here this is this one here yellow and then that's this one here the shimmer I was wondering about and then this one here is this dark blue so I guess she was being helpful but I mean she should have made sure they had fat people chairs first before she tried to be helpful so let's go in with this one here. Here's a bit flecky shimmery and this is the most expensive brush I own in my collection. This is the Sonia G. Worker One. I'm trying to see if it will focus. So this is the Sonia G Worker One. Yeah this is just very easy. So this is a goat hair brush and it is beautiful. This costs uh, $50 US which is about 70 Australian. Let's show you why I love it. So let me know if you've had uh, any embarrassing situations like that. I'd love to not feel alone in my sealess, but this is uh, why I've got like a really shitty chair now. And uh, why I'm like a bit traumatized from buying more chairs. I'm not really about whatever's going on up here. Like, it looks pigmented here, and then I don't like how it's blended out. Hmm. Well, let's do the other. I mean, do you need to see this? Oh. I guess I'm confused with what people want for the eyeshadow tutorials. Because it's like, I want to see the whole process. Okay, well, like, that's actually really boring to watch. Um, originally, I didn't have music. If you're like an OG, that was my new music days. But I found just like, it was sort of okay if I just left background noise in, which is my aircon because I get really hot and sweaty. It sounds like, well, it doesn't sound good. It's like, the whole way through. Um, and then if I've been a bit silly and left my fan on, um, then you get boom, 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 noises throughout. See, this eye is blended so much nicer. No, I haven't blended it out, that's why. I hear people want, they want like the whole process. They want to see it all. And it's easier said than done. I would be happy because I actually have like all the footage. What I could do is upload 
the full eye with some background music or no music and you just mute it and no talking if that's something people are into but I feel like my eye looks aren't like super amazing like they're fine I like them I'm, I'm super happy with what I do to my eye makeup I feel like once I got better maybe maybe it'd be worthwhile doing that but I also noticed like a lot of the eye looks that you see on Instagram and all that shit are bullshit uh, I watched this one, this is one girl I follow, and she posts like these amazing eye looks, like you know they're like, those looks, they look stunning. I wish she uploaded an eyeshadow tutorial the other day. Not so good in real life. Like it's just when you can see the patchiness, you can see the shadow didn't work, you can see the contrast isn't there. And it's fully accepted in the makeup community that people will edit the contrast in pictures and the lighting and stuff now. Uh, but there's so much extra editing that goes on. I have had lots of people ask me about my how I take pictures and stuff, so I think I might do a video about that one time, like soon, uh, at some point. The problem is videos like that take a bit more. Like I have to put my camera on a tripod, I have to carry it around, I have to show you different things. It's just like really hard. I definitely want to upload a review on my ring light, but I haven't still used. I've got a full stand for it, like the full, like a full body stand, if that's what you call it. I have one of those stands and I still haven't pulled it out and used it. And I didn't want to put one review up until I've pulled it out and used it to know if that's like not that good either. So once I do that, I will. And I was thinking of doing like one of my like, sorry, that's muscly. One of my fat people hauls or like go through all my clothes, the try-ons and stuff like, cause I find them useful. And I've got a lot of clothes. I just ordered some stuff from Pretty Little Thing. Um, my current recommendation, if you're ordering from Pretty Little Thing, I'd go up to three sizes. Which is what I do for most of my online orders. Alright, I feel like... Sorry, it's easy to see. I feel like that's relatively even. Cool, cool. Alright, so using the same brush, I'm going to go in with this brighter blue. Let's see what happens. Uh, cause I do like watching hauls and I definitely, I find it hard as someone who is like, I mean like, who's overweight to find clothes that are cute, that fit and that are nice. And it's also hard to like feel motivated to want to buy cute clothes. I definitely am trying hard to lose weight. I go to the gym like three times a week, but I just love ridiculous food. I love eating shit. And that's such a big part of it. Like the Herbalife mantra is fucking true. As much as I hate Herbalife, they are correct. That it's 80% nutrition. What is it? 10%? 80% nutrition, 10% drive, probably 10% excess, something something like that. I just know that it's 80% nutrition. Does anyone else like absolutely hate MLMs? I'm like, we're just going all in. Because I do. I hate them and I hate people wanting to sell me shit. I hate all those unique reps that fucking message me on Instagram. Like, cause you think they're like a nice person initially and then they want to sell you something. Number one, I'm like, I'm in Australia, bitch. You're like, you're in Houston or something. I actually get quite a lot of messages from people like who are unique. I've had a lot from unique. No Mary Kay. Um, and a few nutrition ones, definitely. There was one they didn't realise it was one. Yeah, that blue sort of made it a bit happier. Then we can go darken the shit up. With the top one. And I've got... There, I think there's someone at my work. Who sells Rodan and Fields. And I get that Rodan and Fields were involved in Proactive. I get that they bleached everyone's towels for a long time. <laughs> but I find that anything that encourages you to sell to your workmates, sell to your friends, and that you probably won't earn that much money from, just isn't really worth your time. Because all you're doing is alienating people because you see them as a potential customer. And then because they're a customer, you treat them nicer. I'm actually so scared of one of the people at work and what she wants to sell me. 
because I just don't I don't want to buy that and I, I generally I naturally I talk about makeup so much it's ridiculous so if you are someone who wants to sell things it's so easy to drop it in a conversation with me which really frustrates me because I just want to talk about makeup anything that makes you sign up for like a subscription service I think it's a scam and I think yeah I really don't like MLMs at all uh, especially like ones like Unique who like teaches everyone that they can be a makeup artist oh my god to even get to like where I've learned my makeup has taken me so long and I'm still not that good there's so much to do there's so much you can do all right I don't really know where I'm gonna go with this I feel like we're cut creasing today I'm gonna check the glitter 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 draw Look, I'm going to bring you down because you don't need to stare at my face. But let's have a look at the glitter jaw. Let's check this out together. So these are some from Glitter Tribe. And they are all biodegradable glitter. They're like really nice and pretty. They are a little bit on the chunky side. This could be a winner though. Keep it in our blue vibe. I was sort of maybe feeling like the iridescent from MAC could be a nice combo today. Oh! <gasps> Glow in the dark glitter. I forgot about you. Coming out of the drawer. Yeah, this is like, I think. Oh. oh I've got to find a way to use this, don't I? Oh well. The blue glitter? Yeah, I feel like let's just go for it. It's got like nice thin chunks in it, so you shouldn't really put like super chunky glitter on you. That ain't good. Get the drawer line out put the glitter drawer away. All right, so I'm gonna bring you along for this little ride. But this is my last of my Too Faced concealer sample. I really don't think I should be trusted with this concealer. This shit is powerful, and like the smallest dot goes the longest way. It actually frightens me a little bit how far this concealer can go. And I wonder how similar it is to the Tarte See, did you just see like what a tiny ass dot I pulled up? Um, this makes me wonder what the Tarte one is like. Because if it's anywhere near as powerful as this, like, whoa. Like, I really can't be trusted with this, to be honest. And how do people draw it so straight? The recording stopped up for a minute. I don't really know why. It has a reason. But I think I got it straighter. But I've like done something weird in here now. I mean, it'll work. I think I was meant to more like go like that, wasn't I? That was cool. Let's see if I can keep it controlled the other side. I'm just gonna come back because I don't know what's going on with the recording. So I worked out how to do it cleaner. See, but I already fucked this one. So we're just gonna fuck this one too. Oh, I really brought this in close this side. Oh, there we go. Starting to match. I'm just hoping I can make this look okay later. That's like all I really care about right now. Like, can I pull this off later? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna throw out that concealer because I just, I can't be trusted with it. I shouldn't be allowed it. All right, and I'm gonna mix the drawer line with my Inglot, with my glitter. Poured out too much. I don't think I can save it now. Oh well. Oh, I should bring you a little bit closer. So you can see the full travesty on my face. But hey.
Alright, so it looks okay, but the dura line has meshed with everything underneath and lifted it all. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see how, like, there was all this concealer? Yeah, that's gone now. So I don't really know what's going on in my eye right now. I'm going to try something else than the other one. This might just be a test. We might just start again. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of whatever's going on over there. I mean, I can still photograph the eye. I'll, um, I'll use it for some likes. If you ever seen this video, you know what happened to this eye. So I'm going to lay down a shimmer on this eye. And we're going in with this one. I've just gone in with that middle shade. This one. And dabbed it all over the place. Now let's just go finger with the glitter now. And what I was hoping is that this won't pick up as much product. This is why it's a bit dangerous doing this. It's very close to my eye glitter. I mean that's worked better. But still not that good. Hmm. Alright. Glitter is out. I just can't be bothered trying to make this shit work to be honest. Um, can I be bothered putting mascara on? I'm gonna like be shitty and photograph the eye because like I think it looks nice but I'm not enjoying the sensation. So this is gonna be like a fail video. Um, yeah I hope you've enjoyed. I will definitely I'm about to attempt this look again but hey this is what happens when you fail. I'll see if I can salvage it enough for like a picture. Alright thanks. I'll be back once I fixed my eyes. Alright, so I think I've got most of the glitter off. I think I'll just upload it. I didn't mind where the look was going. I didn't mind what I was chatting about. But we're going to start afresh. Luckily, I gave myself plenty of time. And I've still got about an hour and a half to finish up. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the little fail and the chit chat bits. Tune in for the next one.